Cushing's Bookshelf, Episode 6, Frankenstein, the nonfiction Crestwood House monster series book by Ian Thorne. And uh, welcome back to Cushing's Bookshelf. This is a show on YouTube where every week I consult the bookshelf and uh, pick a book out there to discuss. And this week it is... <laughs> this week is a disaster. That's the truth. Um, because there has been a whole lot of just awful things happening. And apparently, uh, my nice little skeleton in the background has decided to, uh, go the way of a last poor York. I knew him well. Uh, this is the dangers of doing live, uh, recording, I suppose. And, uh, yeah, we got this and we have just kind of like a, little torso left over. I wonder if I, if I put in the batteries, it may just continue to work. Completely unplanned. But if you think about it, this is, oh, how about this? It's, uh, it, well, it's lighting up, but not quite. Oh, yeah, there it goes. Yeah. It's lighting up just like it used to. The only problem is it doesn't have its head. But uh, perhaps I could put it together, Frankenstein-like, which uh, brings us back to today's topic. It's actually a little bit more ghoulish without the head, don't you think? Uh, but anyway, well, that was interesting. Uh, the Frankenstein um, Crestwood House book. A lot of folks know about the Crestwood House book. Uh, books. Uh, Crestwood House was the publisher of... Uh, these uh the series of of books about the the classic uh hollywood monsters of the early 20th century and these books i think first came out in the late 70s actually if you go and you look at the uh title page it was uh looks like it originally came out in 1977 and this is a 1982 uh reprint and uh yeah so when I was a kid, my older brother had a copy of, I think, the Dracula one and also the Frankenstein one. Brought it home from the school library, and uh, he was maybe in fifth grade at the time, so I would have been in kindergarten or first grade. And um, and so I read them too, or I, maybe I didn't read them at the time, but I certainly uh, skimmed through them. And you have to remember that this is a time and place when we didn't have... Uh, video on demand. And so, um, you know, I saw a Frankenstein-like character in The Munsters on television. I had seen Frankenstein in uh, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, but I had never actually seen the film and think maybe not until I was in my 20s, just because when you're a kid, it's, it's just not as uh, available. So, uh, yeah, this book is interesting because it's it was designed for younger readers, um, elementary school kids. Uh, matter of fact, this copy is uh, from a elementary school in Tacoma, Washington. You can see the, that's like the library, a former library copy um, that, and it's cool. We can see like the little card and all the kids who, who checked out the book. <laughs> uh, it's just really cool. Um, but then apparently was, uh, uh, taken out of the library and bought by somebody else. You see there, someone had put their name up there. And uh, then you see the thing there. So I, I thought this book has had a couple of different owners. And uh, and I think I bought it off a books someplace. Um, so yeah, it ended up in my very happy hands. I bought it earlier. I guess it was like maybe last year at some point just because I was having a nostalgia fix and I was able to get this for maybe like three or $4. So it was like, yeah. But anyway, so you're a kid in um, late seventies. Um, I guess I was in, this would have been, yeah, late seventies, early eighties. And you kind of get a chance to see all this stuff uh, kind of in detail and see what all the fuss is about. And, um, and so you have like images from the, the movies and, what this Crestwood House book starts off with is a um, kind of a summary of the uh, 31 Universal film. 
and it kind of goes and provides you with pictures and a plot summary and uh, including the scene with the little girl, which was, uh, I believe, uh, excised from some of the, um, the early versions of the film that made it onto television and whatnot. Um, so we have that and then eventually we get into the story of Mary Shelley and the writing of the book, the Edison Frankenstein, um, a little bit about Bride of Frankenstein, some of the sequels, really nice picture of uh, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. The caption here explaining that the monster was giving the Wolfman a hard time, which I think is kind of self-explanatory in there. I don't know if the caption was absolutely needed in that situation. Um, Abbott and Costello meets Frankenstein, the monsters, right? Uh, and then it goes into Hammer Frankenstein, which I think is kind of cool for a, a book. Um, and then, um, and then it goes into, um, Frankenstein, the true story, which I vaguely remember having seen when I was a kid. Cause I think it was on like a Sunday morning movie kind of thing on one of the local stations. But anyway, so, and then it tells you, you know, the rest of the books in the series. So, uh, yeah, that's the interesting stuff going on here in the bookshelf. And, uh, yeah, what an interesting episode this week. You had a chance to see all kinds of wonderful things and uh, even a change to the set happening right here uh, without a pause in the action because, well, what are we going to do? Shoot over again? Nah. Anyway, so uh, take care, folks, and I will see you again next week.